Hey besties, just so you know, we had some audio issues on this episode, so if Jackie is low, that is why she got a new mic and did not know how to use it. So hopefully you still enjoy the episode, and here is a kid in King Arthur's Court. Welcome to the No More Late Beast podcast. I'm Jackie. And I'm Danielle, and we're just two best friends and ex-Blockbuster employees re-watching some of the best and worst movies of the late 90s and early 2000s. This week, we are covering the 1995 classic, A Kid in King Arthur's Court. But before we dive in, let's get into some housekeeping. If you love the podcast and you want to support us, here's a few ways you can. Did you know writing a review and or rating us helps us get more listeners? If you want to be featured and help us grow, head to Apple, Spotify, Podchasers, Good Pods, or your favorite podcast platforms and leave us a review. Have you subscribed to our show on your favorite podcast platform yet? Doing so actually helps us grow and make sure that you never miss an episode. And if you want to support us further and gain access to exclusive content, stickers, lives, our Burn Odd Spotify playlists, some gifs that have been procured over the season <laughs> head on over to patreon.com slash no more late fees and become a patreon bestie well let's dive in to the movie are you ready i'm ready for those of you who've never heard of the movie let me give you a brief synopsis to 14 year old little leaguer calvin fuller life is like one big strikeout when he lets his team down Then an earthquake sends him through a magical time rift, and he finds himself in King Arthur's court. But all is not well with the realm, and aged King Arthur is in danger of losing control to the evil Lord Belasco. And now it's up to Calvin to save the kingdom. But before he can find a way to vanquish Belasco, he must first find a way to conquer his own fears. The movie stars Thomas Ian Nicholas, Joss Ackland, Paloma Beza, Kate Winslet, Daniel Craig, David Sissel, Ron Moody, and Art Malik. It was directed by Michael Gottlieb and was written by Michael Part and Robert L. Levy. And you can watch it on Disney+. Plus. But before we start, let's get into our ratings rewind. So you know the drill. Before we get into the movie, we'll reveal the rating our Y2K versions of ourselves would give. Then at the end, we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial rating. Our scale consists of would buy it, would buy it again. The best would play on repeat. Five-day rental. Would watch again. Two-day rental. Okay, but nothing to write home about. And same-day rental. Medieval trash, people. Straight-up trash. So, Danielle, what was your Y2K rating of A Kid in King Arthur's Court? I would say probably a two-day rental. I recall seeing it. (laughs) I recall seeing it, but I don't have feelings like, oh, gosh, I hate this movie. But I know I didn't watch it a lot, if not more than once. I hate to even ask, Jackie. I have been looking forward to rewatching this movie for a very long time. We had it on VHS, and after I went to bed at night when I was supposed to be, you know, sleeping, mm-hmm. I would put this movie on and watch it over and over again. Never in my adult life made the connection that Kate Winslet is in it or Daniel Craig. I did know that Hans from Mighty Ducks was in it, though. I'm not surprised that you didn't remember that they were in this movie. (laughs) They, too, wish that they were not in this movie, as we'll get into. So, yeah. Yeah. So it was definitely a would buy it for me. I owned it. I watched it all the time. Very excited to rewatch this movie. You know, if you have a best friend and you've been friends for years, I highly suggest starting a podcast about movies. To learn something about each other, because as the years pass and the more movies we do, I get to know a little bit more about you. Had no idea. Had no idea. 
And I'm surprised that like this wasn't far off from when we met. So I'm surprised that it's not something that you like made me watch. Yeah, no, just at night. Yeah, to sleep too. Clearly. Never played at any of our sleepovers, that's for sure. Maybe you knew it was something to keep secret. <laughs> Let's get into the box office. So the movie, obviously, it's a Disney movie. There, It's got some weird tra- transactions with the movie because I think it might have fallen under the TriStar whole thing, which obviously was still owned by Disney. And this is during that weird time during Disney where they made some questionable decisions. Including Mighty Ducks, because as much as I love that movie, the first movie, if you think about the premise of an alcoholic being punished by kids, yeah, like, no, it's not good. Anywho, the movie had a budget of $15 million and it made $13.4 million. So it didn't quite make its budget. I wonder if that's even still with like VHS purchases and stuff, but. Yeah, because I feel like kids' movies, family movies in general, have a strong showing when it goes to video or DVD. Yeah. Maybe this one, not so much. I don't know. (laughs) But shame. (laughs) Is it? As I will repeat many times in this episode, there is nothing wrong with it. Um, I fully support you living a delusional life. The movie debuted at number nine. In the movie's second week, it fell to number 10. And upon its release, the movie was universally panned by critics. It currently holds a rating of 5% on Rotten Tomatoes, only based on 22 reviews. And the consensus reads, disappointing, even by the relaxed standards of live-action children's entertainment. A kid in King Arthur's court stands as a rare, near-total misfire from Disney. Yet, despite the negative reviews, the Buffalo News, because we all know they're top tier, they replied that this was a must-see for the whole family. Was the Buffalo News the one that, like, faked a whole bunch of reviews? It might be. (laughs) What was it called? Buffalo? The Buffalo News? I wonder what it premiered like what was in the box office at the same time I can you can look it didn't say when I was doing research usually it tells me like which movies came out around the same time yeah but it seems like the Buffalo News is kind of legit (laughs) source their most recent review was Black Adam doesn't capitalize on what the rock could be cooking (laughs) Uh, well, well, that's disappointing. Not about Black Adam, but about <laughs> the, the reviews on my kid in King Arthur's I'm looking to see what if other what other movies came out around it, the same it must time. Have had a banner box office with a lot of hits for this to take. <laughs> is all I'm saying. Uh, well, it's it wasn't properly advertised. Or Jackie, just just maybe the movie was trash, and word of mouth spread that it was trash. There's nothing, Danielle. <laughs> we get fucking baby geniuses and cats and dogs, and that shit performs well. Like, why was this the movie that people are like, no big? Because Baby's Day Out, Baby's Day Out was entertaining. No. <laughs> I was like, how far can this baby go? I was not feeling that way with the protagonist in this movie. Like, I did not... The stakes didn't matter to me in this movie. I think that's really what it was. Like, there was nothing that I could hold on to. The king looked uh, just aloof as hell. And he was eating constantly. Besides the fact that he was Hans, I was just like, oh, okay. And then for, you know, let me look at these names because I don't remember not one. And for oh, Cal- I, did, I, I did not write down anyone's character's name. There's a lot of nicknames in my notes, so might be confusing, but I just roll with it. 
I feel like there wasn't something that I could root for and there wasn't a lot of good character development, even though it's a kid's movie, it's still some. Calvin didn't ask some of the questions that I was asking as a kid. <laughs> and I also think they could have done a better job of the, like the fish out of water scenario of just like you're from another time. Like the villain was just so bad. That was another thing. The other characters I could have looked past, but the villain was just so hokey and ridiculous and almost, what's the word, predator-like. Like, I was worried for Thomas Ian and Nicholas in real life. Like, was this man trying to touch you in your trailer? That's the vibes that it, it, Tabasco it, gave. It, it, I just called him Ponytail, so your nickname for him is way better than mine. He gave me the same vibes as the, the Count, whoever the fuck he was, from A Knight's Tale. Like, yeah. he wasn't evil enough he was just smarmy yeah but the the actor in that was good in comparison this guy was way worse like it was just it was off-putting like what is happening he was so aggressive with the kid off the bat and it just like to this day i still don't know why he was so suspicious of the kid like it didn't make any sense it didn't. You give me a reason why he was that thirsty for that kid. Oh, well, let's get into the movie and I will tell you. Because again, there's nothing wrong. Because Art Malik is not a bad actor. So I don't know what direction was given to him. It was just bad. Wear a ponytail and be angry. Not even angry. I want you to walk over to him, to that kid, and pretend you're sniffing his neck but also yelling at the same time. Maybe, I mean, it was, what's his face? Michael Gottlieb's last movie. That is the and he showed it. That man was phoning it in with, he's like, I think in his writer, he's like, I must have snacks in every scene. <laughs> no, but it wasn't Joss. It was, it was the director's last movie. Oh, was it? Joss. Acklin is still alive, Daniel. I know he's not dead. Wait, but Hans died. No, Hans died in Mighty Ducks 3 as Hans. He's not dead. But why did he die in Mighty Ducks if he's not dead in real life? <laughs> no. <laughs> he felt like it was the end of his character arc. I think that you're wrong and he's he's dead. And because when Hans died, he died. In your heart. In my heart. He's not. If I saw that man in the street, I would have a heart attack. Like, that's not adding up. You're the ghost. <laughs> yes. No, he is still alive. I mean, he's almost 100, but he's Damn. still alive. He is 95. He should have played Dumbledore. Yeah. You know what? That's actually perfect. Tabasco was giving... Dumbledore. You remember when the new Dumbledore started and he was like irrationally mad at Harry about shit and like not as calm and like quiet as the first two movies? It it was just that's the vibe that Tabasco was giving. Oh, I thought you were gonna go. He he was giving Snape Snape suffers. (laughs) (laughs) The ponytail (laughs) so But yeah, again, Joss Ackland. Not dead. <laughs> Got it. Michael God got is, is dead. Director is dead. And this was his final opus. Correct. Wow. Well, okay. Yeah. So the movie opens. We see a very dusty sword, <laughs> Excalibur, and it's in like this secret cave, giving Indiana Jones Last Crusade vibe. Is it? That's the, give- like little cave area was. Mm-hmm. I, was, I, was I list Merlin's face is in a well, like you do, and he he knows Camelot is in turmoil, and so he casts a spell to bring him a knight. Cut to a little league team called the Knights, and Thomas Ian Nicholas's character Calvin is up to bat. He does not have great self esteem. 
strikes out. His sister is like giving him shit from like from the chain link fence. And but his dad is very supportive. Yeah, he's like, you can do this. Choke up on the bat, like all of the baby. Yeah, but also he's like, but also if you don't, I still love you kind of vibes, you know? Like maybe maybe softball is not your <laughs> That's okay. So he, he strikes out. He's down on himself. He goes into the dugout. Huge earthquake. The earth splits open and Calvin is just falling, much like this. It's very, it's giving Space Jam's Looney Tunes situation. Yes. He just falls a very long way. He has his backpack, which the backpack is much like Hermione's never-ending bag in Harry Potter. A lot of Harry Potter references already in this. Mm. Whereas anything he needs, he somehow has in his backpack. Yeah, it was... It's a combination of Barney, Mary Poppins, and Hermione all in one. So and how many uniforms did he have in that backpack? None. So Hopefully he was, was wearing in one. the same uniform, same undies the entire time he was in Camelot. You know what? They weren't bathing back then anyways. Yeah, he fit right in. Yeah. Although the dark smudges on his face when he first shows up in Camelot, it looked like someone just took black eyeshadow and was just like, ugh, ugh, you're dirty. <laughs> so he, he falls out of the sky and lands on the Black Knight who is stealing money from a cart, a horse and cards well from the king because the king is in one of those i think the king's men go chasing him but the king is like not far behind so i'm I'm assuming from one of his own like car i don't know what you call them horse and carriages yeah so calvin is now on the run immediately and the king's men are chasing after him which we find out they're not really the king's men. They're under Tabasco. Tabasco. I almost called him Lord Far- Farquaad. <laughs> Same vibes. Same vibes. And so Calvin gets into town and you get the vibe. King's not well loved. One is living in squalor. They don't have enough food to eat. And their thought is the king's just living his the high life up in his castle taking all of this money from us taxing us essentially to death but we find out it's not the king the king has no idea that this is going on and it's actually tabasco right but when calvin falls down the king says he wants to meet the person that stopped the black knight from stealing which is obviously calvin but immediately tabasco is like has a vendetta against him which makes no sense. Like, at first it made me think, okay, is he in cahoots with Black Knight? No, I think anyone that the king shows interest in is immediately uh, public enemy number one to Tabasco. He I, needs to have the king in his pocket. I just feel like it was so aggressive. He could have, like, done it very more sleek way, I guess. So that just threw me off the way that and he's a child, for God's sakes. You know, I mean, in the medieval times, you didn't live past like 30. Like, there is no way King Arthur was that old. Well, yeah. Maybe he had, what, what's an STD that makes you go crazy? Yeah, I think it is syphilis. Maybe he had some syphilis going on and it was making him... Bad direction is what I'm going with. So, where are we now? This he's in the town. He's hearing everybody talk about how shitty the the King Arthur is, and knights are chasing him, and they finally catch him, catch him and, up, yeah, and bring him it, back to the a, castle. A moment for the knights' uniforms because <laughs> well, the budge was low because they have some sort of like. Roven wa- raffia that spray painted silver in lieu of chainmail. 
it's very much like arts and crafts chainmail esque. They would have done better using Brillo pads at the point. <laughs> That's how bad they looked. Yeah. So now we are at the feast. King is eating. There's like pig head, tongue. It just looks not appetizing in the slightest at all. And I guess the knights made a mistake because they brought the kid straight to the king instead of bringing it to Tabasco. Mm -hmm. And so now he's in the middle of like, I guess, I don't know what you, the hall, the great hall that they're in eating. So I guess there was a miscommunication there. There's a lot of bumbling in this movie. Yeah. But again, there's nothing wrong with this movie. So sitting next to the king are his two daughters. In my notes, I called them Kate Winslet and not Kate Winslet. But really, Kate Winslet plays Sarah, the older daughter. Mm -hmm. And then the other actress. Her name's Paloma. <laughs> Paloma plays Katie, which doesn't make things confusing at all. Right. She's actually, so the actress who played Katie, Princess Catherine, is six months older than Kate Winslet, who played the older sister, which makes her five years older than Thomas and he and Nicholas, who is she, like, she's his paramour or whatever in, in the movie. So, interesting. Yeah, she did look very youthful. Yeah. Another note, Kate Winslet was reportedly told to lose weight for her role and she became sick as a result of that request. I feel so bad for her because in retrospect, she's not a big girl in the slightest. And they really, like, the press, hateful people, especially after Titanic, because she had more of a fuller figure they gave her so much shit and made her feel so bad and gave her so many complexes. And, and like to think about just this shite movie having the audacity to tell her to lose weight. Seriously, it just infuriates me even more. And, and just like how disgusting the industry is as a whole, like, you know, people of all sizes deserve to be represented in, like, nobody should be put under a microscope like that. It's just crazy. I guess that's why she said, I'll read her quote now. Kate Winslet reportedly doesn't have many good things to say about this film, mostly due to bad experience experiences while filming it. In one interview, she simply named it a film nobody talks about anymore. And we're done. She must not have known about Jackie Conley. I know. <laughs> I'm going to slide into our DMs and say, hey, you have a really underrated movie on your hands. <laughs> so the younger princess, Katie, starts eyeballing Calvin. He's like, hey, what's good? Yeah, you want to talk about sliding into the DMs. She was thirsty. She was. There are a couple of throwaway, like, gaggy jokes in the movie. One was, like, Calvin's like, I'm cool. And then the king says, get him a blanket. And, like, a blanket is thrown on him. It wasn't even, like, a small blanket. It's like a hide of an animal. And it was so heavy, he crawls in the middle of the, like, court. And so much that when Tabasco comes sashaying in, he walks right on top of him like he's a rug. Yep. <laughs> so, Tabasco is not happy, and so he challenges Calvin to a duel. <laughs> Just, like, dude. To prove himself. And so he's like, pick your weapon, pick your weapon. <laughs> and Calvin... <laughs> Works smarter, not harder. He's a lover, not a fighter. Right. And Even so he though he knows how to do karate, as we learn <laughs> later. But, like, the rule of karate is, like, you don't use it unless you absolutely have to. I, 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 I think being t 
time warped into a place where a skunk-like man is trying to kill you at every turn, it might be time to pull out the corrupt hay. He had some practicing to do up in his bedroom, in his boxers later. So he decides there are these, like, long horn things. I'm assuming they, like, trumpet them to announce dinner's ready or something. And he takes his headphones and his little disc man. Right. And he's like, my weapon is combat rock and starts playing generic rock and roll music. The way you know this by heart. I wrote it down. I don't know it by heart. Passed it into the room. Everyone's covering their ears. Did you? I was confused because I don't remember my CD disc man playing any noise if i had my headphones out did yours he put the headphones in the horns oh well i missed that because i was very confused yeah so he has beaten lord farquaad at his own game i was confused by this as well because i'm like is that is that a win for real for real he's a he's a wizard you're a wizard <laughs> He had witchcraft. Gotcha. On his side. They should have played that up a little bit more because I feel like Tabasco should have actually been fearful. Because I have a feeling he was actually fearful of of Merlin. So yeah. he didn't act like he that he had witch powers or wizard powers. Yeah. So the king is very impressed. It doesn't take like- much. You come sit by me. And so Calvin's just making light conversation. He's like, oh, where's the round table? And King Arthur's like, what are you talking about, round table? And Calvin's like, explain, like, so you can look at at, at everyone as your equals. He's like, that's an interesting idea. Yeah. So then he is, after the party, he is shown to his room and he's searching for a bathroom. And p- this is where Tabasco gets real aggressive because he snatches him by his arm and is essentially like, I will fucking kill you. If he could have said, I will fucking kill you in a Disney movie, he would have. Those were the vibes. (laughs) I was really on my phone calling CPS as we watched that movie. Yeah, He, he yoked him up pretty damn hard. And then Princess Katie comes to check on him. All right, Katie, baby girl, this whole scene made zero sense to me because I understand where they needed to go, which was for him to go down to where the layer of Merlin was. I get it. The way in which it happened made zero sense because Katie comes in, says that her dad wants wanted her to check on him and even she knew especially in this time period women weren't like ha- given the freedom like i'm surprised she didn't have like a, a court of women with her like you weren't allowed to have you know just unsent unsupervised interaction with a male as a princess you know so then he calls her out on it and she's like okay yeah my dad didn't tell me and then she's like i want to show you something and takes him through a hot ass fireplace. Yeah, she just casually pours half a pitcher of water on the fire and then immediately walks over it. And then they go through a secret door and, and go downstairs and the fire that she had with her burns out. And of course, in Calvin's magical backpack, he has a really great spot, a, a flashlight. It's and, a giant and, flashlight. And I'm just like, why would this be in your backpack for so- for ba- baseball practice? Like, it doesn't make sense. But anywho, they go downstairs to the lair. He sees Excalibur. He sees all these other things. And they see the well where Merlin is chilling or whatever. But then they hear a noise. So she's like, deuces, follow the wall and go back home, back to your room. Like, what, bitch? What was the purpose? What was the what was the reason? I don't know. Maybe she was gonna have some nocturnal time, but they were interrupted. Okay, 
that's true. I always take my my lovers to the dungeon. It wasn't the dungeon. We find out where the dungeon is later. I always take my lovers to a dusty old crypt. It's a secret hiding spot. Duh. <laughs> I I just want to know how he made it back upstairs. And he must have been cold as fuck that night because she put the fire out. And we know Calvin don't know how to rub two rocks together to start a fire. You don't rub rocks. You smack rocks together for sparks. or Rub, smack, whatever. You know what I meant. Well, prior to that, she's like, peace, I'm out. And Merlin shows up in the magical well of destiny. And he's like, I was looking for a warrior. Like, move to the side. Where is he? Where is he? And Calvin's like, I'm all you got. This is what's going on. So he's like, you have to save Camelot from Tabasco. And you need to help Arthur find his way back to greatness. (laughs) And Merlin's like, and Calvin's like, I'm from, was it Reseda? I'm from Reseda. I don't know how I got here. I, I play a night on a baseball team. I don't know what you want from me. I'm 14. And Merlin's like, you do this solid for me. And I'll make sure you get back home. Okay, and so. Calvin's just like, sure. He has no choice. But like, is Merlin not dead? How Merlin? is he doing mur- magic from the the the, the, the Merlin, depths of wherever? It's just Merlin just is he just, so he's come back now from the dead he lives in the well <laughs> well there was a lady in a lake i'm assuming merlin can live in the well all right all right and it's all magic but how i feel like his magic's not working because clearly he's just a little rusty he's been dormant for a while why not pull lancelot from the past because apparently he must be dead i don't see him nowhere i was looking for some hotties didn't see him well we'll, we'll get a hottie uh, no in the next that's a toddy not a hottie that's a, but like he has but so he, much to choose resur- from he can resurrect people daniel oh now there's limits to this fucking magic there's but he can go get yeah. Kid from Calvin from Encina. Century later from a baseball team. That's a huge mistake. Maybe this is a alternate universe, and that's where he pulled him from. His magic is a, a little off. I'm just saying. I'm surprised yeah. Calvin is able to get home at the end. Agreed. Spoiler alert, everybody. He does not die at the hands of Tabasco. <laughs> that would have been very interesting. So my next note is Tiny Head shows up because <laughs> to me, Daniel Craig has a very tiny head in comparison to the rest of his body. And so I typically call him Tiny Head. And I know that is not kind, but it's what I do. And I can't apologize for who I am. So yes, Daniel Craig with a full head of hair and if you didn't tell me that was Daniel Craig, I would have been like, that looks like Daniel Craig-esque. <laughs> like if I squint and like tilt my head, but I would never in a million years be like, hey. I still will go on my deathbed not claiming him in this movie. <laughs> Hot mess city. He barely has a role. He, he's horrible acting. And that bowl cut is just horrific. Oh, it's behind me. There he is. I want to say he's runner up right behind Courtney Cox in the bay. For terrible haircuts. And yes. Movies. Yeah. Ooh, that's a TikTok. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty shitty haircut for uh, sure. So Yeah, he's just, I guess, a peasant that's good at fighting. He's not of noble blood at all because no. it comes into play later. So he's helping Calvin learn how to fight because there is a tournament coming up that, so Sarah, the older daughter, Kate Winslet, has refused all suitors, much like Jasmine. And so now they're having a tournament and whoever wins the tournament wins her hand. And those are just the rules. 
and it has to be people of nobility. It cannot be common folk. So Daniel Craig is not even eligible to play in this, but I guess Calvin is of nobility. I thought, I don't know. Yeah, the first thing they do is like, okay, random stranger who helped save us from the Black Knight and you're going to come stay with us because now we think you're a wizard. But what we'd like you to do instead of working on your magic is to train for a tournament that you don't really enter until you enter. Because if you think about it, he was never entered into it until a situation arose. You're right. You're right. But he was also knighted, so he was eligible at one point, but he still wasn't entered in. Conclusion. Yeah. The, it, the details, tiny murky. Well, nothing wrong with this movie. It's as dark as the well below. While Calvin is working on his his jousting and his fighting abilities, Tabasco just lurking in the background. I think he's straight just, stalking everywhere. He's just creeping. Yeah. And then he has a conversation. Tabasco has a conversation with Sarah. And he said, you are the most exquisite flower in this garden, princess. And she comes back, she claps back with, <laughs> a rose will prick you, but I'll do far worse. Damn. Ice cold. Give her her snaps. <laughs> Kate Winslet didn't have much of a role, but she did the she best that she could yeah, with she what she had. Every scene she was in. Yeah. Calvin then goes to the farrier and and is like, hey, can you make things? And he's like, yeah. So he hands him one rollerblade from his backpack. It was like, I need you to make a pair of these. And the farrier does. So Calvin presents them to Katie and they have a lovely time rollerblading around the castle. I want to say that her rollerblades reminded me of my Fisher Price roller skates, the ones that you could expand as you grow. Those, like the blue and yellow ones. Well, mine were yellow and red, but yes, yeah, oh. they were very cheesy. <laughs> well, they had to look medieval, so it was like wooden <laughs> wheels. Yeah. Also, my question is, like, he's going to ask this person to make this, but he has no money. So what, it's just on the house because of the, he's a king, guest of the king? Um, he's giving a farrier inventions that are going to make him very well. Oh, so we're on a, a intellectual barter system. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, rollerblades were invented in the medieval times, Danielle. I'm Moving just on, shake my head. <laughs> Tabasco then goes and has a conversation with the king, and was like, "I've done a lot for you. I want the the princess's hand." And the king's like, "I'll see what I can do." It's <laughs> friends <laughs> like, "Well, hmm, she hasn't chosen you, and the tournament's coming up, so you just gotta win the tournament." No problemo. And he's like, I'm not having none of that shit. I'm not playing in this goddamn tournament. And he tells his, like, henchman the same thing. But... <laughs> oh, well, how did the king get here? That's what I want to know. I, I think I think he slipped into a depression when Guinevere died. Mm -hmm. Because he does talk very longingly about their mother, Guinevere. Aw, Gwen, Gwen, how you left us in a pickle like this? Who knows? But King Arthur does invest in a round table. Ah. So he can eat more nasty food. So we can look him in the eye as he eats his disgusting food. Yeah. yeah. Then we see more training. Tabasco shows up. And now it's just a grown-ass man fighting with a kid. Yeah. Oh, well, we are in, we're introduced to Bullhead over here. This is when we first meet. Isn't this where we first meet? No. He's where, up earlier. When? They trained for the tournament twice. Oh, this is the second time. Okay. Yeah. This is when they're just flat out fucking jousting in the middle of the forest. 
Oh, okay. And he's like knocking him on his ass. And we're like, jousting, we have learned from a night's tale. Very hard to film. You can't fake it. Yeah. So the fact that these two actors were having to do this <laughs> as a grown ass man and a child, very concerning. Yeah. And then the next scene, Calvin is making Katie a very lovely dinner, which he calls a Big Mac, not a Big Mac. No. Everything is wrong about this. And he has on it what she refers to as poisonous love apples. Tomatoes. Tomatoes. Which, yeah. not on a Big Mac. I think we had something about the tomatoes. Also, like, I just was like, where is he getting the ground beef from? Is that wrong that that's what I was thinking? <laughs> no, where did you get? Like, you're telling me Calvin made dough for the buns. Well, I'm sure there's bread in the kitchen. But for okay. them to look like that, maybe he yeah. just went down to the kitchen and told them that he needed buns. Maybe. maybe. And poisonous love apples. Yeah. And so the next scene is the king talking to Sarah and telling her, her you're going to marry Tabasco or Tabasco. And she's like, the fuck I am. The tournament's going to decide. And the king's like, fair point. She's like, I cannot. I have IBS. I can't handle hot Tabasco sauce. Yeah. So no, I need that cool glass of milk over there. Yeah. A.K.A. Bowl, bowl cut. Bowl cut dinner. Which Katie and... Calvin are walking through the forest and see Sarah and I don't even know if he has a name. He does. If he that's a good name. What's his <laughs> fucking name then? It's Master Kane. Oh, Kane, that's right. So they see Sarah and Kane making out in the forest and we're, and they're like, ooh. But actually this this Katie is like, oh shit, you didn't see that. Look away. <laughs> Avert your eyes. <laughs> and everything in this movie is very thy, thy, <laughs> thou. Let me just say. Shield it, your eyes from thine sister. I know Jackie claims there's nothing wrong with this movie, but I would have to say the one glaring ridiculousness is this damn script. And the fact that whoever wrote it was really trying to commit in some way to it being old English and at the same time not committing to it being old English and looking I think they like looked in a book and said how to make it more old English and he, they were like thy that's that's what's gonna do it for me <laughs> thou and thy that's it it is ridiculous how how much I want to download the script and see how many times it says it I'm looking to see what else these gentlemen. <laughs> yes, let's see what other treasures they put pen to paper for. Michael Part did not do what? <laughs> Cadillacs and dinosaurs. Oh, hold on. <laughs> what year did that come out? It was a TV series in 1993. Oh, my God. He did do the sequel of Kidding Aladdin's Palace. Not which surprised. Which Thomas Ian Nicholas also started. Which I don't understand because he said that this movie was the one movie that he wishes that he wouldn't have done. Which I'm like, okay, so you wish you didn't do this movie, but we're fine with the other one? You know. it's There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> and then... What? What's it? What are you... What is, Robert L. Levy. Let's see. He wrote Smokey and the Bandit. You know, a clock, a broken clock can be right twice a day. So, all I'm going to say. Not much else, but yeah. And then he also co wrote A Kate Kid in Aladdin's Palace and Mm -hmm. Blood Surf from 2000. That's an alligator on the cover. Anyway, where are we? He goes, okay, so then Calvin's like, rollerblades worked out great. (laughs) Because I got another, 
I got another date and it's got to be on wheels for the second time. Yes. So he brings him like blueprints. He has drawn out blueprints and schematics of a bicycle. And he's like, you build for me. So Calvin is like an an engineer. I don't know what, like how is, because I can barely draw. So I know if I went back in time and someone asked me the schematics to give them a like new age technology, like a bicycle, it would not be anything they could use. It would at be all. six year old drawing. It would, 100%. Yeah. But I mean, the farrier is like, I got you. <laughs> and I'll do it in a half an hour so you can take Katie on. Right. I do love that while we were watching this, Ken saw the bicycle and said, you know what? They did a good job making that look medieval. <laughs> he was not mad at it. No. <clears throat> he also said, this movie is not that bad. He did jump to your defense and say, it's not the worst movie ever. He said it he was... Said it's not that bad. <laughs> but to say not that bad does not mean it's not bad it's not the worst of bad still bad we'll we'll ask so then this scene made danielle laugh out loud because katie has a big fat crush and she is lamenting i think to her sister about it and she just runs into the room, throws herself on the bed as she yells, distress. <laughs> and this is where we see the candles pissing in the background. <laughs> so, like we're watching and of course it's medieval. So it's just a bunch of candles. But I guess like the la- the wax had finally gotten soft enough where it like bends and all of the pooled melted wax just like steady stream. And so we don't, I don't know what happens in this scene other than distress because we're <laughs> all just watching the candle look like it's peeing in the background. Yeah. The stream. Yeah. I don't think we miss much anyways in this scene. Yeah, just lamenting to her sister that she really likes Calvin. And then we get a scene with Calvin talking to King Arthur and sharing some Mad Dog bubblegum, which if you were a child in the 90s, you probably have had Mad Dog bubblegum. And what it does is when you're chewing it, it foams up like you are a rabid dog. Yes, because we needed to pretend we had rabies in the 90s we were down for a gimmick but the king did something that i always used to do bubblegum swallowed it immediately and calvin said you're not supposed to do that and i agree with the king what's the point why would you put this in your mouth if you're not going to swallow it everything else i put in my mouth food wise Finish that thought. Finish that thought. <laughs> Everything I put in my mouth that is food, I swallow. It's a normal human being thing to do. So why I was gum? Tell me what else you swallowed. I <laughs> Jackie. <laughs> Anyways, and gum. Because it makes sense. <laughs> it's the only so, thing that that king said in this whole movie that made sense to me. So then Tabasco, Tabasco comes in and is pissed at the king because he's not making Sarah marry him. And the king's like, I can't fucking force her. So just win the tournament. What the big deal is. So now the king is on Tabasco's shit list too. Yeah. And the king is aware that like, he has to be careful with Tabasco because he owns the King's Guard. And yeah, Calvin has looped him in like, hey, the villagers hate you. They think you're taking all their money. And so the king like is at least smart enough to put two and two together that it's Tabasco like 
pulling these strings behind the scenes. Tabasco is like to his the the guards is like, well, if I can't marry her this way, I'm gonna find another fucking way to do it. Tabasco's a fucking rapist. I will just put it out there. It's, it's very can I privileged. No, 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 it's very Sheriff of Nottingham. Yes. Played by Alan Rickman in Prince of Thieves. Yeah, but worse. Yeah. So now we are going to have a very lovely picnic. Calvin presents <laughs> the bike to Katie. She is very much wooed. And then he tells her about his conversation with Merlin and the well. And fills her in on that. And then do, do they somehow make it to the village? Yeah, I think so. not. Well, you know what? I can't remember. My notes just say told villagers hungry. Black Knight is the good guy. Yes, they do make it back to the village and they see all of the villagers like eating and talking and being happy and they see the Black Knight kind of right off and they and they both roar like, oh, wow, the Black Knight is actually good. He's stealing, but he's giving back to all the villagers. We have a tiny bit of Robin Hood in this. Yeah. Yeah. And then they shared their first kiss. Did which they? now. Is- Must have blacked out and over in that part. Which now that you say she was five years older than him. How old was he in 1993? Uh, 93 is well this is 95 so they filmed i think they filmed in 94 so whatever age he was in 94 is 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 relevant yeah so most of the sixth century portion of the film was shot in budapest hungary while the majority of the 20th century portion was filmed in late september 1994 at a softball field of london so 1994 is when they were filming. Oh, they filmed at Central yeah, he was 14. High School. He was 14. And sh- so how old was Paloma? Let's see. Another gross part to add to the series. She was 19. Or 20. Because Kate, Kate Winslet was 19. Very disgusting. Yeah. It does not make me feel great. So there is one thing wrong. Oh. (laughs) Sure. We'll start there. So Tabasco lies. Well, he doesn't lie. He, He has his henchmen go and kidnap Princess Katie. Yeah. He goes to Sarah and says, I have your sister. I'm going to kill her unless you marry me. Yeah. And so Sarah has no fucking choice and he's just a fucking slime ball. And then Calvin runs to Merlin and is like, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm 14 years old. I'm in over my head. And, and, in- and Merlin's like, take Excalibur. It'll all be fine. And so Calvin does somehow, like, has it on him, but like, doesn't let anyone know for a very long time. And I know his backpack was decent size, but couldn't have, like, how did it fit that entire sword? It didn't. It didn't. He had to have just had it on his hip and no one noticed, question mark. He pulled it out of the backpack later. So it is a magic. <laughs> I don't think it is. I think they just think we're fucking stupid. With these plot holes. Maybe he was in his backpack, but there was a hole in the bottom of the backpack. All right, Jackie. I'm going to I'm gonna stop you right there. You're getting a little ridiculous <laughs> trying to make this oh, work. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> yes. That huge ass sword fitting in that fake ass Janspore backpack? I don't think so. That's why I said there was a hole in the bottom and like the tip could go. We would see the tip. Come on. Well, I, I, that's what I am saying. <laughs> is somehow we would have seen the sword. Because <laughs> it all makes uh, sense. What happens. So when he drops off Katie to her room after their date, you see her like, he's like still talking to the door. You see her being kidnapped. Like 
mm-hmm. hand over mouth, whatever. And is it Calvin that runs to tell Arthur that Katie's yeah. been kidnapped? No, actually, doesn't it- Calvin run in, run into the sister, the older sister in the hallway at some point? Yes, but not till later. later. So what happens is he runs to tell Arthur. He hears Arthur talking to Merlin. Uh-huh. And, and this is when Arthur is saying that he misses Guinevere, blah, blah, blah. And then Arthur leaves and Calvin walks in and that's when Merlin like takes Excalibur. Okay. And then he also tells Merlin he's not sure he wants to go home yet, which... I mean, I get you're like Mr. Popular here in Camelot and you're a loser in in Cena. So then this is when Tabasca goes and he's fucking manhandling Sarah. And then he also I think this is when Calvin shows up and he tells Calvin that he's under arrest for the murder of Kate. Yes, and, and that's when he goes. That's when he goes on the run. He uses some of his correct hang rules, yeah. and then Sarah finds him in the corner and tells him what to do, where to go. And I think she alerts her dad to all the craziness that's happening with Katie. No, she tells Calvin, "You need to go tell my father what's going on," and she gives him like one of the ropes from her, right, so that he knows that she, he's telling the truth. Yeah. This is a scene where we laugh extremely hard because we see King Arthur sleeping with his crown on his belly and he's got his, he has his his nightcap on. And with a quickness, as soon as someone knocks on his door, he switches to his crown, like without blinking an eye. And he's not really surprised when Calvin tells him that Katie's been taken. Yes. And so he's like, okay, I got you, I got you. And so then Tabasco shows up, Calvin Hyde, and Tabasco is like, Calvin has killed Katie, and the king puts on the performance (laughs) of his life. I felt like I was watching Myrtle in action. (laughs) It was perfection. And Katie is actually in the dungeon. She is not, in fact, dead. So they have to go in hiding. Because they can't go out. Well, they as... have to. Well, yes. This is when Calvin's like, you can't go out in public. Everyone hates you. Right. And so they disguise themselves. And Calvin's like, and we have to get into the dungeon. And Arthur is like, I know a way. And then they proceed to go out through the royal house. Garbage dump. The poop dump. Yes. So they get out of the. the... It's more like a shoot. Yeah. Um, So they get out of the castle. They're in disguise and they're going through swamps. They're walking through the forest. I don't know where he's taking them and how long he's taking them to get to the dungeon. But they like Arthur does know a secret way in. He's like, Merlin showed me this long ago. (laughs) And he's proud of himself. And then they, so they find Katie and she's locked up and Calvin pulls. A Swiss Army knife out of his backpack is unlocking the the jail door, gets her out. The, mm-hmm. the king is very intrigued about this Swiss yes. Army knife. He it's he's enamored very he falls hard. And then Arthur is lamenting that he needs Excalibur, and Calvin happens to have it, like we said earlier. We don't know where he procured it from. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe it's something like the sort of Gryffindor where like if you need it, Merlin just like magically delivers it to you. I don't know. Sure. So now everyone is fighting the car, the guards. This Katie is stolen by a guard and they're like on the roof or something. And so he puts her right where she could fall into one of them, the, into the water, which is the, what is it called? Starts with M. Moat. Moat, yeah. The <laughs> moat surrounding the castle. And do um, you tell me how Calvin yet again foils. <laughs> I feel like 
I don't know if this is what we left the hardest at, but this is definitely mind bending. He pulls out his CD disc player thing again and somehow configures it where there's a fucking laser that points out at out of it and like hits the guy right in the eye and he like falls over or whatever and katie's able to leave but i was like this is ridiculous now <laughs> he works smarter not harder but with what this this technology what he did does not exist a laser is used to read a cd i understand but how did he pull it out of the cd player that way even ken was like come on bruh maybe it was <laughs> not a quality cd player with <laughs> whatever <laughs> that was that was not at inspection because if, if it, that's the case it's dangerous to hurt children people in general it was crazy Each, there's an age warning on it plot hole um, so they escape into the forest, and this is when Calvin is knighted by Arthur, and he's official knight of the round table. And then Tabasco meets up with Sarah, who consents to marry him because she still thinks that he has Katie. But then Katie walks in, and so Tabasco knows, knows he's been had, and so he just runs out. <laughs> he runs out, knows now his bitch ass has to be in the tournament. When we get to the tournament, the father, King Arthur, throws a wrench in Tabasco's whole plan because he then offers up the opportunity for the ability to take his throne, the castle, everything, his daughter, and whatever prizes, I guess, go with it, to everybody. Like, everyone, either, whether you're noble or not, can participate which means that Bowl Cut has a chance to win his lady love and Tabasco is a beast. So he's, but he's a cheater. So he's got some up his ass. So he's like, I got some for the ass. Boys are cheats and liars. They're <laughs> such a big disgrace. So Kate Hudson, or Kate Hudson, that's not <laughs> even the right Kate. No. Nope. Uh, uh, Sarah, Kate Winslet is very excited. It was like doing one of these. A little like happy claps. <laughs> and she gets up and she runs off. Yeah. Like, she's just so elated. And Tabasco does, like, this tiny, like, hand flick thing that <laughs> he's just over the whole thing. And he's done with his plan being foiled. So he actually has to fight. And he's a big, fat fucking cheater. Surprise, surprise. And he has a gem in the middle of his night jousting helmet that's what it's called that like blinds the the opponent so that he can win and so we have learned from a knight's tale the rules of jousting yeah and it there are three rounds and it's not an immediate win unless you knock your opponent off the horse, Their horse. so he and, and kane being yeah master kane Master Kane are the last two standing and he blinds Master Kane and he hits him really hard. But he doesn't and, fall off his horse. Correct. And then, so even in the movie, like, that's, it. like, someone's like, that's it. He lost and Danielle and I were like, ah, those aren't the rules. Of <laughs> so we finally got the sport. We got it just happened to be a medieval sport that not many people know the rules to. We know the rules of jousting. We'll make a killing at medieval times. We will. <laughs> I want to go to medieval times. So they have a few minutes. They're trying to like knock some sense back into Kane. He is totally out of it. And so Calvin goes and he's like, He's like, I have an idea. And so we we see Kane in air quotes back up on the horse. They joust. Tabasco knocks his helmet clean off. So everyone thinks they've just witnessed a decapitation. But the horse but keeps really, moving. Yeah, and the horse keeps moving. And then you just see Calvin's little head pop up from like the the 
the armor. So he he took Kane's place, and then he he, hit, he hits the he hits Tabasco, and he falls off his horse. Yes. But I just don't understand how it's even legal for Calvin to participate at the end in place of Kane. Because I don't know. But I think that's why the next thing happens. Uh-huh. Because the Black Knight shows up and like like essentially her horse is like stomping around Tabasco and he's like shuffling backwards and gets in his tent and his tent falls on him and stuff. And yeah. Then the Black Knight takes their helmet off and it's Princess Sarah. <laughs> Which and it's hilarious. Yes. So she has been robbing the rich to feed the poor the entire time. She's, She's been robbing herself. Yeah, but yeah, villagers need to eat. Yeah, but which gains favor back to the the king and the princesses? Yeah. Do you want to tell everybody what how how Ken reacted to finding out that Sarah was the Black Knight? So she she takes her helmet off, and Ken immediately is like. Really? I didn't even see that. And he was blown away <laughs> by that revelation that Sarah was. I mean, I don't remember a thing about this movie, but process of elimination. No, but process of elimination. You knew it wasn't Kane because his ass was dropped. It wasn't the pr- the younger princess. It wasn't Calvin. And we know King Arthur's ass wasn't getting up there. So I was like, it has to be Sarah. Yeah. Because it was. Yeah. They didn't introduce a random person at the end. Yeah. And so then the king proclaims because like Cain won, but because the Black Knight has done all of this stuff for the villagers and kind of like made a mockery out of Tabasco she has won the right to choose who she wants to marry. And so she chooses Aladdin. Just kidding. Kane. (laughs) So I goes Aladdin. It's very Jasmine. Oh, okay. (laughs) She picks bowl cut. Yeah. And then Calvin now has a one-way ticket back home, thanks to Merlin, and is able to travel. You know, he says his goodbyes, and he travels back through the well. And he's back at his so- his ba- baseball game, but before he, he strikes. strikes out, yeah. And all of a sudden, now Calvin knows how to hit a ball. It was never the the skill. I think it was the confidence. Right. Oh. Well, he has the confidence now, he and he hits a home run, runs around the plate, or maybe not a home run, but he hits it far. And he 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 makes he makes it to home base. And then we see Katie pull off a helmet or whatever hat, and she's there, and her daddy is there. Whitland Wood in the stand. Yeah. So I was confused by that whole scenario. They're and just that, there to support. They're visiting. Is that what it was? It was a visit? I don't know. I, I don't. Okay. Hans was back again. Alive. Yep. And that is... A kid in King Arthur's court. Like let's, I said, there's nothing wrong. Let's go through some of the other fun <laughs> facts that we missed. This is the second film where Thomas Ian Nicholas plays a Little League baseball player, as we all remember him, as Rookie of the Year from 1993. Yes. If you pause the movie around the four minute and 10 second mark, as Calvin steps up to the bat for the first time, you can clearly see Princess Catherine in the Knights jersey on second base before Calvin travels to Camelot, which is a, what, what do you call it? Easter egg. Thing. In China, the title loosely translates to the vigorous. In Turkey, as Jumping Knight. In Finland, as Yankee at King Arthur's Court. In Germany, released it as Night Skater. <laughs> that's the best one it is nice with a K. the original intention was a straight up adaption of mark twain's a connecticut yankee and king arthur's court when with none other than sean penn attached to in some fashion 
at some point, the film got reworked, I'm putting quotation marks, into something more family friendly. And Sean Penn said, fuck it, I'm out. <laughs> Best decision he ever made. Ron Moody previously played Merlin in Unidentified Flying Oddball. He seems very Merlin esque. The sequel titled King Al- Aladdin's Palace was released in 1998. As a direct to video with Nicholas rep- reprising his role as Calvin Fuller, the cast also included Rona Mitra, Nicholas Irons, James Faulkner, Taylor Negron, and A.A. Ron. A.A. Ron, and Diana Kent as Jasmine. And it was released with the Mickey Mouse short film Runaway Brain preceding it. Before we get into our ratings, don't forget to hit us up at No More Late Fees on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, or YouTube with your feedback, your hot takes. If you agree that there's nothing wrong with this movie or you agree that there's lots wrong with this movie, anywho, let us know. We want to hear from you. So, Here. Here. what is your current day rating of this movie? I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to stay with a two-day rating. It it wasn't the worst movie ever. I would like to save those same-day ratings for a more shitty vehicle. Will I ever watch this again? No, I will not. And what about you? So I don't own it. It has been on my, like, I hope the price drops on iTunes so I can buy it for a long ass time. Mm. And now that it's on Disney Plus, I really don't need to buy it. I will give it a five day rental. I, it just, it's, uh, I enjoyed it. It's a fun little <laughs> movie to watch every once in a while. If kids are around, I would definitely put it on. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Well, if you have any opinions or if you just want to give us feedback, suggest some movies, tell us what you like or dislike about the podcast, correct us, you know, what else? Just want to talk a little bit. Hit us up at our quick drop 909-601 and MLF 909-601-6653. You can twat us at the tweeters or leave a voicemail on our Anchor FM account that's great for international users, and you can be featured on a future episode. Well, we have a special birthday shout out to our wonderful friend, Marley. Happy birthday, friend. We are so happy you're one of our Patreons, and you're just such a great supporter of the podcast and just us in general. We love our friendship and we hope you have a wonderful day today. Enjoy watching Fast and the Furious. For the million fucking time. Vin Diesel. <laughs> oh, and here's a special message from our dear friend, Vin Diesel. Hey, Marley. Happy birthday. When you hear your family. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Marley. Happy Bye. birthday. Love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> And join us next week as we dust off our computer skills with Angelina Jolie and Matthew Lillard movie Hackers. Very excited for that one. I know. I feel like I always say I'm so excited for the next movie coming up, but like Hackers is like up there. I would say January is Jackie's month. She very much loves the movies that we're doing this month. It is. February is Danielle's month, 100%. That's it. Until the end of January, what? February. Let's do this. And as always, be kind and rewind.